the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, responding to a question about statements made by opposition parties, the president responds saying that the benchmarks agreed to with the International Monetary Fund cannot be changed. Further commenting, the president added that Sri Lanka will permit the import of vehicles in 2025 in stages as the country needs the revenue from custom duty. Stock exchange sees weekly fluctuations with losses on Monday, gains yesterday and mixed sentiment today. And Apple's lucrative deal with Google could be under threat as US judge rules that the Alphabet owned such giant was operating an illegal monopoly. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us. President Ronald Vikramasinghe said that the benchmarks, revenue and expenditure figures agreed with the International Monetary Fund cannot be changed. At a Q&A with heads of media organizations held today, Ronald Vikramasinghe said the IMF has not changed their position on benchmarks agreed to with any country. He said that they have entered an agreement with the IMF and they have to implement it and if they implement it as we go along, there won't be a problem for Sri Lanka. No, we have come to an agreement with the IMF and we have to implement it. If we implement it as we go along, there won't be a problem for Sri Lanka. Now others are coming up with various proposals that they want to change. Then they must tell her what they are going to do. One thing about IMF is that the benchmarks will not be changed. They have never changed it for any country. Benchmarks are there. So, for instance, you want to give something free from some place and you want to uh, increase VAT to 25 percent. Well, if the numbers are agreeable, they will say yes. But you can't change the benchmarks and the revenue figures and the expenditure figures. Answering another question, he added that Sri Lanka will permit the import of vehicles in 2025 in stages as the country needs the revenue from custom duty. He said that the reserves are being built up and it is anticipated that this will allow the import of vehicles because duties from vehicle imports are a major source of revenue needed by the government for next year. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbala Pitya has said that the final decision regarding the lifting of the ban on vehicle imports will be taken in the second week of this month. The minister said that he hoped to be able to import vehicles depending on the country's exchange rate status and the priority of people's needs. The Minister of Trade said after a meeting with the High Commission of New Zealand that Sri Lanka and New Zealand have discussed expansion of bilateral relations between the two countries in trade, education, dairy industry and sports. New Zealand High Commissioner David Pine met Minister of Trade, Commerce and Food Safety Nalin Fernando at the ministry recently. The High Commissioner was quoted as saying by a government statement that New Zealand will provide its support to promote the tourism industry. Pine believed it was important for Sri Lanka to be unique in the international market under one or more products under one name instead of competing in the international market under different brands. Minister Fernando said the country is focused on diversification of local products in the international market. Pine also praised the Sri Lankan origin population in New Zealand as a group with high labour skills. State Minister for Finance Ranjit Siambala Petia said as a new subsidy scheme was announced, Sri Lanka's banks were still owed 88 billion rupees over interest subsidies paid to senior citizens in the past. The Cabinet of Ministers yesterday had approved a new interest subsidy scheme which would put a flow of 10% on deposits of over 60 persons. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbala Pitya said that President Ranil Vikramasinghe listened to requests from senior citizens about the situation they were facing. He said that they were reviewing the previous scheme under which the government has to pay 88 billion rupees to banks and this is the time when payments are being progressively made back. He added that despite this, the President looked at it sympathetically and made a proposal to the Cabinet. Senior citizen subsidies were discontinued as interest rates rose steeply to stop an economic crisis triggered by central bank rate cuts enforced with liquidity injections. Let's go for a short commercial break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. 
The stock exchange has been fluctuating this week, ending Monday with losses, showing gains yesterday and recording mixed sentiment today. Today, the all share price index recorded gains while the S&P SL20 registered losses, resulting in a neutral trajectory. For a summary of today's trading session, let's join Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Yes, Anuradhi. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange continued the, the trends of the previous session, displaying dull sentiment amidst ongoing political uncertainty, causing the All Share Price Index to remain stagnant at closing. The SPI started the day on a bullish note, eventually closing at 11,295, gaining only one point from the previous day. The S&P SL20 index, however, experienced a decline, losing six points to close at 3,221. Most of the diversified financial sector counters witnessed some buying interest throughout the day, with Selenko Holdings emerging as the top positive contributor towards the ASPI. And as low sentiment persisted, turnovers stood at Rs 320.3 million, marking a 63.5% decrease from the monthly average amidst low participation from retail and high net worth investors. The top gainers of the day include Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Rainica Holdings, Browns Beach Hotels and Sathasa Motors, while the top losers of the day include S&P Finance and Tess Agro Non-Voting. The central bank's bill auction for this week was held this afternoon and to get the latest updates and its outcomes along with the impact on the secondary market, we connect Tarusha Ashokgar from First Capital Holdings. Yes, today we saw a sizable upswing in auction yield across the board after near one month where yields edged up up to 22 basis points. Central Bank of Sri Lanka offered LCAR 155 billion at the auction today and accepted LCAR 146.2 billion. So accordingly, three-month bills saw a relatively smaller increase by 8 basis points to 9.22%, while the six-month bill increased by 22 basis points and closed at 9.56%. And one-year T-bill saw an increase of 11 basis points and closed above 10% mark at 10.06%. Today, we also saw an oversubscription for three-month bill amidst high acceptance, although six months and one-year bill was undersubscribed. Post-auction outcome, the secondary market saw significant selling pressure across the board. Selling interest was mostly centered on short to mid tenors predominantly on 2026 and 2028 maturities. For this week ending 9th August, CBSL has LCAR 157 billion worth maturities to settle T bills, while LCAR 146 billion has been raised from primary auctions during the week. We believe yields may continue to see some upward pressure for the short term due to the surrounding uncertainty in the broader market direction. Gold prices inched up today, driven by safe haven demand and raising bets that the U.S. Federal Reserve might reduce interest rates as early as September, while a rebound in U.S. dollar and Treasury yields limited gains. Spot gold rose 0.2% to $2,393.66 per ounce, having settled lower in the previous four sessions. U.S. gold futures gained 0.1% to $2,434. Prices fell as much as 3% on Monday caught in a global sell-off driven by fears of a U.S. recession. Bullion is considered a hedge against geopolitical and economic uncertainties and tends to thrive in a low interest rate environment. Oil prices crept higher today, though Brent still languished near seven-month lows, pressured by concerns over weak demand and fears of recession in the United States. Brent crude futures were up 45 cents or 0.6 percent to $76.93 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was up 47 cents, also 0.6 percent, to $73.67. The threat of conflict escalating in the Middle East and endangering oil 
oil production has supported prices since yesterday. Prices slipped earlier in the trading session following U.S. data showing an unexpected build in crude oil and gasoline inventories. The Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the U.S. dollar today, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar is 297 rupees and 50 cents, while the selling rate is 306 rupees and 76 cents. Let's now observe the rupee situation in the global market. Short break now, updates from the corporate world coming right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Singer Sri Lanka PLC set a new benchmark for flagship smartphone devices in the country with the grand unveiling of the Honor Magic 6 Pro. The device represents the pinnacle of smartphone innovation and performance in Honor's portfolio and is renowned for its cutting-edge technology and user-centric design. As an exciting new entrant to the competitive high-end smartphone market, the Honor Magic 6 Pro is poised to become a favorite among discerning smartphone users across the country. A key highlight of the Magic 6 Pro is its achievement of the DxO Mark Gold labels, making it the first smartphone in the global industry to receive this achievement. DxO Mark, the renowned consumer electronics testing and rating agency, has confirmed the Magic 6 Pro surpasses the top devices currently on the market across all evaluated categories, namely camera, battery, audio, selfie and display. Attractively priced, the device offers a suite of unparalleled features and advanced specifications. Commenting on the launch, Mr. Mahesh Vijayvardhana, the CEO of Singer Group of Companies, stated that their partnership with Honor reflects Singer's commitment to bringing world-class technology to Sri Lanka. The launch aims to position Honor as a top flagship option in Sri Lanka, emphasizing superior usability and advanced specifications. Alliance Air, a subsidiary of Air India, has achieved a significant milestone by completing its 500th flight operation to Jaffna International Airport on the 6th of August 2024. The airline's commitment to enhancing connectivity between Chennai, India and Jaffna, Sri Lanka has been commendable. Alliance Air recommenced commercial flight operations from Chennai International Airport to Jaffna International Airport on the 12th of December 2022 after the pandemic. The Chennai Jaffna route plays a crucial role in connecting Tamil Nadu's capital Chennai with Jaffna in Sri Lanka's northern province. At present, the airline operates daily flights between Jaffna and Chennai, giving more opportunities for travelers to explore cultural business and tourism opportunities between the two cities. The airline operates its ATR 72 aircraft, and up to date in 2024, the airline has handled over 50,000 passengers through the northern gateway. The airport aviation ground handling team has provided all ground handling services for these flights, ensuring a smooth and efficient experience for all passengers. Seat has been chosen as the original equipment tyre for the 2024 Hyundai Grand i10, assembled, sold and serviced in Sri Lanka by Abans Auto, clinching them another OEM partnership for the country's highest selling tyre brand. The partnership, which brings together two significant players in domestic value addition and a leading global automobile brand, paves the way for German-engineered 15-inch Seat radials tyres to be fitted on the Hyundai Grand i10 hatchbacks assembled at the Abans Auto Plant in Sidua. The company stated that the tyres, designed and tested by German engineers at Seat's own research and development centre in Frankfurt, Germany, meet the stringent original equipment manufacturing manufacture performance criteria for the Hyundai Grand i10 and will not only enhance the vehicle's looks but also ensure superior safety and performance. <music> 
Camera LK recently opened its latest showroom in the Maldives as the official distributor of Sony Electronics. With the opening of the showroom in the Maldives, free photography workshops will also be available for photographers in the country. Additionally, consumers in the Maldives will have the opportunity to purchase official Sony cameras and audio products with an 18-month warranty from Camera LK branch in the Maldives. This event can be seen as a significant business milestone for Camera LK, further strengthening its business goal for emerging as a lead in providing camera accessories across South Asia. As a result, photography enthusiasts and professional photographers in the Maldives now have the opportunity to purchase cameras, lenses and any camera accessories produced by Sony. Along with the professional reputation Camera LK has established in Sri Lanka, this new branch will provide excellent customer service and a new camera experience. Camera LK offers more than 5,000 products from renowned camera brands, providing anyone with the opportunity to select the best camera to suit their needs. With the branches in Colombo, Candy and Jaffna, and a user-friendly online store, anyone from anywhere on the island can conveniently fulfill their camera needs. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce launched the Best Corporate Citizen Sustainability Awards 2024 at a seminar to brief prospective applicants on the award process for the year 2024. Held this year for the 21st consecutive year, the BCCS Awards, which champion corporate sustainability in an increasingly environmentally vulnerable world, are one of the most anticipated events in the corporate calendar. The briefing webinar was led by the chairman of the panel of evaluators, and a veteran in the field of sustainability, Mr. Ratika De Silva. Applications for the BCCS awards are now open with the application forms, brochures and other relevant documents accessible at www.chamber.lk. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates right after this. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian share markets rose today, led by another bounce in the Nikkei as the Bank of Japan unexpectedly turned cautious on rate hikes amidst market volatility, inducing a sharp fall in the yen. Sentiment had looked a little shaky early in Asia, but Bank of Japan Deputy Governor said in a speech to business leaders, the central bank will not raise interest rates when financial markets are unstable, boosting risk assets. The rate hike set off a three-day tumble in Japanese shares, a surge in the yen and a rapid unwinding of the currency carry trade that dragged down risk assets globally. Worries over a slowdown in the U.S. economy and sky-high valuations for tech shares helped fuel a dramatic sell-off on Monday. Turning now to Wall Street, the S&P 500 and Nasdaq rose by 1% yesterday as investors re-entered the market following a sharp decline the previous day. Recent remarks from Federal Reserve officials have alleviated concerns about a potential U.S. recession. Wall Street's main indexes rebounded Tuesday as investors jumped back into the market a day after a dramatic sell-off. The Dow gained three-quarters of a percent, and the S&P 500 and Nasdaq each added 1 percent. In recent comments, Federal Reserve policymakers have pushed back against the idea that weaker-than-expected July jobs data means the economy is headed for a recession. Traders are pricing in a 75 percent chance the Fed will cut rates by 50 basis points at its next policy meeting in September, according to the CME Group's FedWatch tool. Though later this month, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell could give an indication of where the central bank stands during his speech at the annual meeting of central bank officials in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Stocks on the move Tuesday included AI Darling NVIDIA, up nearly 4 percent, giving the S&P and Nasdaq their biggest boosts. Uber shares jumped 11 percent after the ride-sharing and food delivery provider beat Wall Street estimates for second quarter revenue and core profit, helped by steady demand for its services. And Caterpillar gained 3 percent after beating analysts' estimates for second quarter profit, as higher prices on its larger excavators and other equipment countered moderating demand in North America.
Updates on Google's illegal monopoly now. Apple's lucrative deal with Google could be under threat after a U.S. judge ruled that the Alphabet-owned search giant was operating in an illegal monopoly. Apple's lucrative relationship with Google could be at risk after a judge ruled that the search giant is operating an illegal monopoly. The Alphabet-owned firm pays the iPhone maker $20 billion per year to be the default search engine on the handsets. That's according to analysis by Morgan Stanley. But analysts say avoiding antitrust penalties could require terminating the agreement. Instead, users might be prompted to choose a search engine. It's estimated ending the exclusivity deal could knock up to 6% off Apple's profits and leave it looking for new options. One might be to offer alternatives like Microsoft's Bing. Another could be to develop a new search product, maybe powered by OpenAI. Apple has already said it's bringing the firm's chatbot to its products. But it's also in talks to offer Google's Gemini bot and other AI models, which analysts say is a sign it's worried about doing more exclusive deals. Apple's search engine pact with Google runs until at least September 2026. Legal experts say wrangling over the monopoly ruling could last just as long and maybe go all the way to the Supreme Court. Oil giant Saudi Aramco reported a 3.4% fall in second quarter profit on lower crude volumes and softer refining margins, yet kept its generous dividend policy unchanged with 31.1 billion US dollars in payouts for the quarter. Oil giant Saudi Aramco reported a 3.4% fall in second quarter profit on Tuesday. Results were weighed by lower crude volumes and softer refining margins. The net income for Q2 was just over $29 billion, Aramco said, which did beat analysts' expectations. Despite this dip, it kept its generous dividend policy unchanged, with $31 billion declared in payouts for the second quarter, a third of which was performance-linked payouts. Aramco said on Tuesday it expects just over $124 billion in total dividends this year, roughly in line with previous guidance. The Saudi government holds nearly 81.5% of Aramco and relies heavily on the company's payouts. The kingdom has made cuts to its oil production, working at three quarters of its capacity, as have fellow members and allies of oil production group OPEC+. Plus. They've made these cuts to bolster the market amid uncertainty over global demand and rising supply outside the group. But lower output and prices have pressured Saudi state finances. And to meet financial needs, the government sold a fresh chunk of Aramco earlier this year. But it may not be entirely gloomy for the world's most profitable oil company. On Tuesday, CEO Amin Nasser said he expected oil demand growth of between 1.6 and 2 million barrels per day in the second half of the year. And with that, we conclude today's nightly business report. I'll see you again tomorrow with more key updates across the business world. Until then, I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Have a good night.